had to do a modification to my 1995 Sega Nomad. Uh, my name's Ben. These came in 1995 with an LCD screen, and even at the time, the LCD screen was inadequate. So if you want to use one of these now, you're gonna to wanna to do this mod. You're upgrading the LCD to a modern screen, something like you would see in a portable DVD player. And I wanted to just put something together so that anybody could just watch this video and theoretically um, gather all the components and then do the mod. We're gonna talk about the essential parts and um, tools that you need to make this happen. So number one, you need to have a basic understanding of how to solder. You need to have a, a decent soldering iron. If you don't have those things, then don't even bother with this mod. Let's assume you have those things. You're gonna to wanna to go out and buy proper solder. So here's the kind of solder that a professional uh, console modder told me to get. It's 60-40 tin lead rosin core, and it's 0.6 millimeter size. It's uh, $7.50 on Amazon. Rosin flux pen. You need flux in order to clean your solder points on the board. Um, if you don't have this, your soldering is gonna be garbage, basically. So I like the pen because it's very easy to maneuver um, as opposed to the, to the paste. Next, you absolutely must buy this 4.5 millimeter extra long security bit tool. Um, and when you look for it, it's gonna be for the Virtual Boy and the Sega Nomad. It's like six bucks on eBay. It opens the, the case. You can't, you can't even do this without this. The last part that you need to acquire for this mod is the most important, and that is the LCD screen. I bought this on eBay direct from uh, China. It was $18.99 with free shipping. It's called a TFT LCD, it's 3.5 inch, and the one that I bought comes with um, the board, the ribbon cable, and the, and the screen itself, and it comes with this, uh, this cable that connects it all together. I would recommend buying this it was $4 on eBay, and you can search it. It's a glass screen protector cover for the Sega Nomad. And it's this part right here. It goes on the front. While you have it open, you might as well replace it. We're gonna get down to it. I'm gonna show you what to do. Turn your Nomad over after you've assembled all your, your parts and tools. So you're unscrewing these here with the Phillips head, and the security bit is gonna go here. Take all your screws out. So once you get your screws out, you're gonna separate it carefully. So what you're looking at is this half holds the cartridge, this half holds basically the brains and everything. Um, so the first step that you're gonna do, you just firmly grasp this ribbon connector here and it just pulls out. Wiggle it a little bit back and forth and it just comes right out. It's made to come out. Put this part aside, you're not gonna need it. So now that you have this, as you can see, I've already done the mod. You're now going to disconnect the rest of your connections. You're gonna disconnect this cable here. You're gonna disconnect this cable here. Loosen the, these Phillips head screws here, 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 and I don't know where the last one is, but it's. I'll show you where it is as soon as I find it. <laughs> So once you've removed the screws, and I wanna clarify, I made a mistake. I said that there might be four screws. There's only three screws. And you've disconnected the connection here and here. Um, I forgot to mention that there's also a connection right here, and this is what it looks like. And then the other end of this is gonna be connected to your original LCD component. And this is what it's gonna look like. So I've already done the mod here. So what you're seeing right now is not what you're gonna see when you go to do this for the first time. You're gonna see the, the screen connected with this cable folded over and connected to the board just like that. So it's gonna look like that. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is, this is the point of no return. You're going to want to lift this up and then, I mean, you're doing this, so you gotta do it. You gotta pick this corner of the ribbon up 
and lift it and it's gonna peel right off, okay? That's gonna then free the original LCD screen from the board itself before you can lift this whole mechanism out. So once you've done that, you're gonna have your, your connection and your board and you're gonna set them aside. You don't need that anymore. The board is gonna be exposed from where you lifted up the original ribbon. I took a piece of electrical tape and I just laid it down over that connection so that it was protected. At that point, everything is free from the board and you can now lift it up off of the chassis. So what you're seeing in this area is where the old screen used to reside. It sat in here like this. This is the new screen right here. This is the new ribbon cable, which is connected to the controller board for the new screen. This wire is a wiring harness that came with the LCD screen that I bought from China. This is what the wire looked like and the board so that you can get an idea. So here's the, the connector and you can see the fat part. Below that, it was just a little connector with a long wire. I cut it off at the fat part and discarded the rest of it. And then this is, the, this is what it looks like after I deconstructed the, the wiring harness. It just, the, the, the end that came with it plugs into the board and the rest of it had a sheath which I removed to reveal all of the individual wires inside. The red one is the five volt power. The black wire is the ground for the power. The yellow wire is my composite video input and my, my white wire is my ground for the video signal. Some of the boards that you can buy from China only come with a three wire harness. In that case, just work with what you see here so you may have one less wire in what you buy. When I wired this up and soldered it to the Nomad board, I started first with the, the ground wire. It goes to TP210 on the board. The red wire goes to TP209. The other half of the board, I did the yellow wire to TP237 for the video input. And the white wire, which you may or may not have, just goes to the um, it just goes to a ground point, which does not have a, a designation on the board. So once I had that all wired up, I then set the board with the wiring harness aside and I moved on to putting the screen into the case for the Nomad. So this was actually the, believe it or not, this was the hardest part of the whole process because um, it involves maneuvering the board it involves maneuvering the screen in such a way that you can see it. It needs to be centered. So I'm just gonna show you what we're working with. So it needs to be centered in here. So what I did was I placed it down and I actually did a test run. I turned, it, I turned this on, I connected this, I turned it on and I was holding it down firmly with my hand and looking at it this is gonna take some time. Be patient with this process. Once you have it where you want it, you really should actually hot glue it in the corners. I didn't have a hot glue gun. Electrical tape works just as well. So you can choose to do it that way. So I, I glued it down and keep in mind, once you have it glued down, your, your cable and your controller board are just floppy. They're loose. So once you have it all glued down, you're gonna to wanna to do a final test. So you plug this wiring harness in and then you actually need to basically put it back together. It's like a dry run and you wanna make sure everything works. So when you're doing a test run, you actually do have to connect the two halves of the unit with the cartridge with the motherboard in order to allow the unit to power on. And that's through this one ribbon cable connection. So you just push it and it goes right in and that's how you can get it to, to operate. Once you've satisfactorily tested the unit and you're happy with the way everything's going, you can then just pull the ribbon back out and set the, the cartridge half of the unit aside 
you can then button it all back up. Um, in doing so, you wanna you don't have a lot of room in here. So what I did was this ribbon cable sticks up. Uh, there's no way around that. So I took a piece of paper from the back of the old screen and it was actually screwed down. You can see one of the screws here and there was another one there. It's literally a piece of paper and I removed it from the old screen. So once I removed the little piece of paper from the old screen, I put it on, I taped it down to the back of the new screen. And the reason I did this was I wanted to make a protective surface so that nothing was touching, no metal was shorting out against any other metal. So I taped it down, I put electrical tape around the edges, which you can see, which prepared a nice clean surface for me to mount the board. I have the wiring harness plugged into the board and it's still floppy at this point. Once the tape is in place, you're ready to then mount the board and, and basically start buttoning everything up. If you happen to have double-sided tape, you can use that. Alternately, you can also use hot glue. Put the hot glue with the double-sided tape on the back of your controller board, and then push, put, you're gonna wanna push it as far against the case as it'll go without crimping the harness, and just firmly push it down, and it's set in place. Your end result, you want it to look something like this. So keep in mind, I think I mentioned this earlier, you wanna tape the back of the board so that nothing touches and no more no metal shorts out anywhere. This is the part that can get tedious because you really have to make sure your wires are all tucked up. So you pick up your board with your wiring harness and everything in the case is, is secure and you sort of just fit it in here. You need to get your power button as you do this and just sort of slide it on because it goes into this slot right here. And there's no sort of right way to do this. So I, forgive me for not saying more, but um, you're just fitting this all in at this point. You do it whatever way it makes sense to you. So once you have this loosely fitted in here, you can start connecting everything. And I'm just gonna go over all the components that need to be connected so that you don't forget. Um, just keep in mind that your original connector for the, the old screen's um, backlight, you're not gonna reuse this. So this would normal, this came from here. This does not get reconnected. So this is discarded. So here's where you're gonna reconnect. Once you have it looking like this with your power, your power switch in place, I'm gonna turn this a little bit. Reconnect the start board. Reconnect the speaker. And after that, it's really just a matter of tucking these wires in and making, making it all look good. And this is, like I said, this is gonna be the most tedious part. So you just sort of route these any way that you think they're gonna be tucked out of the way without getting uh, crimped, I guess. You're gonna screw the three screws back together. I'm gonna give everything one more check. I can, you can see that my three screws are in place. All my wires are roughly where I want them to be. The ribbon cable is connected. So we're gonna just close this on up. So there you go, as you can see, Fits back together nicely, nothing's binding, nothing's sticking. And from here, you're just gonna put the screws back in that hold the case together, and you're done. And I'm just gonna give you a quick demo of how it looks. Here you go. So when you turn it on, you see a nice crisp screen. Sega. Turns right on, you hear the iconic Sega. And as you can clearly see in about two seconds, look how beautiful and bright that is. So thanks so much for watching and uh, good luck with your mods. Going, um, do the, oh, you can't switch it once it's already. Uh, that's why. It's not why, I just messed up.